I'm not on it, am I? <clears throat> uh, now go. Hi, welcome to another edition of Talking Sports with the Legend. Tonight's guest is Mark Heimendinger, also known as one of my grade school teachers. <clears throat> <laughs> Take it away, Steve. Where were you born? What? Where was I born? Yeah. Uh, I was born in Philadelphia. Yeah. Where did you go to grade school, high school, and college? I attended maternity BVM grade school. I went to Archbishop Ryan High School, and I graduated from Slippery Rock University uh, for college. Did you play any sports? I I I started playing sports as a young kid. I, I loved them all, baseball, football, and basketball. I never got into soccer or any other kinds of sports, but baseball, basketball, and football uh, were sports I definitely played when I was a young kid. Uh, when I went into high school, I ran track for two years, mm -hmm. and then my junior year at uh, Archbishop Ride, I made the junior varsity basketball team, and then my senior year, I was a, a deep sub on the uh, 1972 Archbishop Ryan team, which was the first team ever to go to the playoffs. Oh, wow. <laughs> what was your first coaching job? My first coaching job was back in 1976 at Archbishop Wood High School. I was the freshman coach from there. From there, I moved on to Neshaminy Maple Point as a junior varsity coach. And then I became the varsity coach when Joe Setti, uh, who was also a coach at Archbishop Wood at that time, uh, got the Bishop McDevitt job. I got the uh, Neshaminy Maple Point job. And then in 1982, I, I got hired at Cardinal Doherty High School. Where did you coach after Doherty? I coached at Samuel Fells High School from 2009 till last year. Wow. We used to live right around the corner from there. Mm -hmm. Did you always want to be a coach? Steve, probably I, I really wanted to become a coach and a teacher probably my junior year in high school. Um, I had a great high school experience at Archbishop Ryan. Um, and then I had some teachers there that were very positive influences in terms of not only being excellent educators, but also making learning fun. And then as I, as I grew into, into playing basketball at the high school level, I really decided I wanted to coach and, and teach as my lifelong profession. Did you get nervous before every game? <laughs> I, I, I would say I got more excited than nervous. Um, uh, because again, the, the excitement really came about, Steve, like, you know, once you step on that floor, particularly before a game, uh, your focus is not on anything else that's actually happening in the world, but what's going to happen during that game, um, an influence that you can have in terms of having to make split second decisions uh, during the course of a game. And uh, uh, again, it was more of being... Um, um, not necessarily nervous, but excited. Were you know, like, how was your your last game? Were you before? Were you like nervous, sad? Did well, you, uh, when you say my last game, are you talking about my last game at Fells or my last game at Doherty? Because, last game ever. So well, because I, honestly, Steve, I, I I I was I retired in November of this year. So my last game was in last February and I was going to coach and teach one more entire year. So actually the last game that I coached at Samuel Fells at that time, I didn't realize it was my last game because oh, wow. I thought I was going to be coaching this year. Oh, crazy. What about the hockey? How was that? Well, and again, the same situation existed at Doherty. Um, the last game that when when I last game that I coached at Cardinal Doherty, 
I did not realize that the school was going to be closing the following year. Um, so it, I, same situation at Fells. I, I never realized that that was going to be my last game as, as the coach at Cardinal Lackerty High School. I know that you got to coach a lot of good players. And two of them went into the NBA. What were they? Were they Kyle Now and Katina Mobley? Were they like first? Were they like the first players on the field in the gym and last one to leave when the extra uh, week? Yeah, they they were the two players that made it to the NBA. There were several players that for a couple years played overseas at a professional level. Um, Bobby Coppolino was a player that played for me in 1987 that was actually played for a couple of years for the Washington Generals, the team that plays the, um, the Harlem Globetrotters. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, if you consider that there was people that made some money overseas, they would be professional players as long as, as well as Bobby Coppolino, specifically Kyle and Catino, um, um, did play actually in the NBA. Kyle was usually one of those kids that was the first one in, last one out. Not so much for, for Catino Mobley. Catino Mobley, I've never seen a player in all the years I've coached Steve that blossomed into such a good player uh, over a one year period of time. When, 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 when Cat was his freshman, he was literally one of the last people on the freshman team. And he was kept because he was kind of like 5'10", gangly, had some athleticism and just looked at him and said, you know, maybe this player can help us in a couple years. So we as a staff sat down and decided we would we would keep him. And the transition that he made from his freshman year to his sophomore year was unbelievable. And he just kept getting better every year. Kyle was a, a little bit more of a, 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 a finished product. Um, Kyle was like a, a wild stallion that you had to take his aggressiveness and his determination and, and kind of kind of just get it under control so he could play with a controlled rage as opposed to just playing with a, an uncontrolled rage. And I think that's the, the best way that I could describe Kyle. Well, he didn't go to Doc, right? His freshman year? He went to Northeast his freshman and sophomore year. And one of the reasons why he transferred to Cardinal Doherty was because his best friend, Shane Clark, uh, who also played at Villanova, uh, was, 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 was at Doherty at that time. And he used to come to some of the practices on Sundays and sit in the loony bin and just watch the things that we did. And, you know, he approached us about transfer and we, we never really went after Kyle. Hmm. That's cool. um, what else you asking? Yeah. Do, do you have a do you did did you have a role model in coaching? Uh, hmm. That's a great question. Um I didn't have one particular role model. What I did was I looked at different coaches and, and tried to see the things that made them good coaches and tried to take a little bit from this guy, a little bit from that guy, you know what I'm saying? And, and just look at their overall body of work and, and try to take snippets, if you will, of, of, of how I would incorporate that into my coaching philosophy. Do you want to coach an higher level someday? Do you want to coach an higher level someday? No. What was the what was your favorite team to coach against? To coach against? Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. That's uh, that's an interesting question because again, uh, you know, especially in the Catholic League, there were so many good coaches and so many teams that did did things differently that it made it very hard to uh, prepare. Um, I would think, though, you know, when you talk about some of the coaches that that I coached against, particularly, you know, I mean, Phil Martelli, uh, who coached at St. Joe's, was a coach when I went into the league. Joe Rapsinski, uh, Billy Fox, uh, Marty Jackson at LaSalle. I mean, I, I'm doing coaches a disservice by not naming everybody, but th there was no real favorite team to coach against because every game was a war, every game was a challenge, 
And uh, basically, you know, you wanted to win every game. I mean, uh, Archbishop Ryan was a school I went to. So I always had it, had, you know, had a little notch for, for wanting to win at Ryan. Dave Mahal was a very good coach. Bernie Rogers after him. Um, you know, Joe Setti, I was coaching against my, uh, the man that I worked with for a couple of years at, uh, at Wood and at Maple Point when he was at McDevitt, uh, Jimmy Fennerty, who ended up having a great career at, uh, at Germantown Academy, uh, you know, Dennis Seddon, Buddy Gardler. I mean, there were just so many good coaches and I, I know I'm, I'm probably letting a few names not being said here, but, uh, uh, it wasn't a favorite team to coach against. Uh, it was a t it was every game was my favorite game because the object of it was to win the game. What what team would you say put the biggest like away thing to Dockery? Like when you guys played them? What teams did we play against that used to bring a lot of people to Dockerty? Mm -hmm. Um I would think offhand LaSalle always had a very large following. Uh, the McDevitt game was always a big game because we were like semi neighborhood rival rival had some had were semi blah, 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 were <laughs> neighborhood rivals. Um, North Catholic used to bring people to the gym, honestly, and, and and you were there at the time, so you know how packed that loony bin got. And the one thing I'll say is that the the, the kids that went to Doherty, they were they just were just outstanding people to have cheering for us and could really make other teams very, very uncomfortable when they came into Cardinal Doherty's gym, especially the, the group, uh, as you well know, that used to sit in that loony bin. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was there every game and the one game I remember we played in North. And some of my friends went to North and they came up to the game and they were they were just they, it was just so cool because like Nobody like some of my friends were talking. I'm like, I thought the devil would like start trouble with what they did. <laughs> well, well, the kids from North Catholic always brought a little attitude with them. Let's just put it that way. You actually know the mom, Rainy um, Lesby. Yeah. <laughs> Rainy, the Rainy's kids. Yeah. yeah. I think he's closed. Rini's kids took him to the game, right? No, you know, they came up to talk. Oh, oh they yeah. came. They came to see him? Come on, yeah, let's yeah. ask another question. Yeah, yeah. Come on, double one. He came up. Remember, every time North played hockey, everybody went. Yeah. Did you have a successful season last year? Did you have a successful season last year? Did, how did your team do last year? Uh, last year, we were a couple games above 500. We had a lot of young players that I was looking forward to coach this year, but unfortunately I didn't get an opportunity to coach them in this year because of, of retiring in November. Okay. What was, what, how far have you, did, have you tried, how far did you travel? Four years, four years. I'm not sure what you mean by that question, Steve. When you say how far, I mean when we, we had team, we would travel. We we would go to New Jersey. Um, we went to South Carolina one year. Um, so we did we did some traveling, but again, it wasn't on an every year basis. It was depending upon how, how good the team was. But we traveled into Delaware, South Carolina, New Jersey. Uh, went up to Williamsport for for a couple games. Um, so we did we did do some traveling at Cardinal Doherty. Biggest game you ever played in or coached? The biggest game you ever played. In what was the biggest game you ever coached? You know, people would end up saying any game that involved a championship on the line, but to me, it was any playoff game that I ever coached because. Uh, if, if you didn't win that game, your season was over. Um, so I, I don't know that there's any one game I would say that was bigger than another. Again, most coaches would probably gravitate toward saying anything that had involved a championship on the line. But for me, particularly, uh, any game that was a playoff game was the biggest game I coached in. Did you ever win a championship as a coach or a player? Did you ever win a championship? We won, and I don't know the exact amount, Steve. Um, we won 
uh, quite a few Northern Division championships. But in the time I was at Doherty, we did not win a Catholic League championship. But again, we did win, and I, I don't know how many championships that would be because I've never kept track of my own records. Um, but we did win several championships in the Northern Division of Cardinal Doherty. How did you keep such a successful program? How did you keep Doherty's program when it's so successful? Um, first of all, Steve, you have to have good players. <laughs> um, I, you know, when you when you look at coaches that that have won. Uh, a lot of games in their career, there's a couple common denominators that are there. First of all, they have good players. Uh, they have great assistant coaches. Um, they, they, they have the ability to, to bring out the best in their teams. Um, the only thing I would say that led to any degree of success that I personally brought to Cardinal Doherty was being able to change up how we played. Uh, by that, I simply mean, you know, as a college coach, uh, you can go out and recruit players that fit into a system that you have. Uh, back in the day when I coached at Doherty, uh, there really wasn't any recruiting going on in a sense that it was still very much a neighborhood league. So basically you got the kids that attended your neighborhood public schools and your, the, your neighborhood parishes. And the only thing I would say is that I would look at my team and realize, hey, you know what, this team may not be a real good man-to-man -man team. Um, so therefore, we would have to play more zone. Or I would look at a team and say, you know what, we've got some pretty good athletes here. Uh, we, can, we can do a little bit more full court pressure and we can play a little bit of man-to-man -man, and we can change up the offenses according to the talent level that we have. So as I said, being successful at Doherty is not a reflection of me. It's really a reflection of having pretty good players to coach, great loyal assistants, and then just kind of uh, tinkering around with what you want to do based on the talent level you have in any year. I followed your career from probably when Katina Mobley started. That's when I first started. That's I like that, well, his senior year was 92. Cat actually started playing varsity basketball like in 1990. So yeah, that's 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 quite a while. Yeah. Right, one of my cousins was a cheerleader. So she would always get me to come down on the, on the bench after the games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when he was there, I, get, I would get to hang out with him once in a while. Small that's world. nice. <laughs> Small world, asking if he's going to miss coach. Now, what made you transfer to Fells? Did you? Uh, well, Cardinal, Cardinal Doherty was going to be closed, just so we understand. Cardinal Doherty was going to close at the end of the 2010 school year. And there was an opening at Fells at the beginning of the 2009 year. So um, I decided at that point in time, if I wanted to continue to coach, that I had to make that move then. Uh, so that I could continue to coach because if I ended up finishing out that year at Doherty and the job wasn't open at Fells, uh, then I obviously wouldn't have gotten it. And it also gave me an opportunity because all the time that I coached at, um, at, at Cardinal Doherty, I never really, I didn't teach at the school. So working and coaching at Fells gave me an opportunity to actually teach and coach at the same school. And uh, that's basically why I left Doherty. And my one assistant, Billy Day, uh, who was with me for a number of years, uh, got the opportunity to uh, coach one year as a varsity coach. So I was very comfortable knowing that he was going to get the job and that uh, uh, the program would be in good hands for one year. How different was the coaching from the Catholic League to the public league? A lot different. Um, <clears throat> First of all, in the public league, uh, the way it's structured, and that, that's starting to change now a little bit, but the way it's structured is basically all your, all your league games are either Tuesday or Thursday in the afternoon. Whereas as in the Catholic league, uh, your league games could be on a Sunday, they could be on a Monday, they could be on Friday, and they were night games. So the atmosphere was a lot different too with people coming to games on a Monday night or on a Friday night. And uh, 
then that also gave me the ability that if I was playing on a, on a Monday, uh, Sunday, I could go to practice and then go scout a game. So scouting is, was very difficult in the public league because basically all the teams were playing at the same time. Do you keep in touch with any of your former players? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Um, it's kind of hit or miss. One of the ways that we usually connect is at the Doherty, at the Cardinal Doherty uh, reunion on the summers, in the summers down the shore. So there's a lot of players there that attend that, and I attend that as well. And it's, it's nice to sit down and uh, uh, rehash some of the old times that we had as, a, as players and coach, as, as a player and a coach. And now to see a lot of these, these men now being very successful people and having good families and things of that nature, it's, it's really made coaching a, 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 a rewarding experience that I never anticipated when I first started coaching. And now one of, one of them, um, Mike McDonald, coaching at Woodnail, huh? Yep. So I ran into Mike a couple of times at some uh, interpretation meetings. Um, Mike played, uh, I, I, you know, the years escaping me now. I'm going to think it was somewhere around uh, 1999, 2000, in that time frame. And uh, M Mike has done a great job at Archbishop Wood. I believe he's won a state championship, won some Catholic League championships. And he was just a pleasure to coach because he was just a point guard that really wasn't all that talented but he was smart. He understood his role. He understood the role of the other players that were on the team and any good point guard always makes everybody else better than they are. And, and Mike certainly had that mentality. He's a player, tough kid, uh, didn't back down from anybody. And it's not surprising to see him be such a successful coach. Yeah. I played for his dad, Matt, at Fox Chase. We have, know, the, know the McDonald family well. They're a great family, and it's, yeah. it's not hard to see how, how yeah. Mike became such not only an, a, an outstanding coach, but just an outstanding young man. Very good family. Mm -hmm. What else, Bill? How did you guys, how did Dockery do in your last season? <sighs> My last season, I got to think back to that. Um, I, I, you know what, Stephen, I'm lying if I would tell you I knew the exact record. I, I Again, I never was a person to keep records or, or to keep that kind of information in, in, in my mind. Um, I, I just know that, again, at Doherty, I had the same situation I had at Fells. We had a good young nucleus that was coming back. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry that I didn't get an opportunity to coach them. But again, all the teams, especially that I had at Cardinal Doherty, Stephen, uh, were just kids that work hard, understood their roles, and, and really gave me a lot of satisfaction uh, in the ability to coach them. Did anybody, did any of the players for Fells like make it like, go like, play overseas? No. No. And then the last question. If you could have dinner with three uh, coaches or players, they could be dead or alive, who would they be and why? <laughs> well, let's start off with, first of all, I, I, I've known Jay Wright. Jay Wright was a senior at Council Rock when I first started coaching basketball as a junior varsity coach at, um, at the Chamonix Maple Point. Uh, so I, I've known Jay since his senior year at, uh, um, at Council Rock. He'd be one person I'd like to have dinner with and actually have had dinner with him. But, you know, you also talked about, you know, who would you like to sit down and watch a game with? Uh, mm -hmm. He would be one because I, 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 I actually went to several of his practices, especially when Kyle and Shane were being recruited. And to see what he does in practice, you can actually see the kind of station work and breakdown drills and things of that nature that he does that you can actually see during the course of a game. So then I was thinking about football, uh, the, the, the football player, the football coach that would come to mind is the guy that's been out of coaching for a couple of years now, but you still hear his name every once in a while, would be Dick Vermeil, who coached the Eagles uh, in the 70s. Just a, a, a great man, very passionate about the sport, 
uh, was a guy that really started to get the Philadelphia Eagles um, football team uh, uh, back into uh, uh, some degree of notoriety during his tenure here. And uh, baseball, I, I, again, a, an old timer, I like to sit down and talk with Larry Boa. Um, you know, I think all those three names that I've mentioned may not be names that other people would bring up, but, you know, n knowing the way that their teams performed and the passion that they had as coaches uh, would make for an, an interesting dinner or an interesting uh, athletic event to, to be with. Mm -hmm. Was my mom a good uh, athlete when she was in school? <laughs> um not to my you don't knowledge. Have to prove me right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was good. Okay. Yes, your mom is very good. <laughs> Can you blank that part out on this tape here and just go to the right to the part where I go, yeah, mom is a very good athlete. <laughs> I'll do that. Let's have okay. to do it. All right, great. <laughs> I'm so happy I got to interview you. Thank you for your time. Well, Stephen, first of all, I think it's a, it's a great thing that you do. Um, thank you for thinking about me and uh, conducting the interview. I, uh, as I said at the beginning here, I was a little nervous, but as I got to talk to you a little bit more, I kind of relaxed a little bit and felt very comfortable. And I think you do a great job. And uh, uh, I'll look forward to you know, trying to track down some of your other interviews and see who else you interview and, and how they go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, take care. Kate and I'll okay. see you now. Take care. Thank Mike, you very th much. Next time, I'll have a drink. Hopefully, you, <laughs> you, you, better, you better not let that part go in either, okay? <laughs> stay, stay in touch <laughs> and uh, give my best to everybody you still talk to. Thanks, Mark. I'll talk to you later. All right, see you, okay, sweetie. Bye. 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 Well, that was awesome. <clears throat> that was cool. See, he was nervous and look how like, look how